How will you make your way out to your escape destination from wherever you live when we're in the middle of spiraling chaos? Will your primary route be clear? If not, have you planned for multiple possible routes? If you're near an urban center, will the roads leading out be stopped at a standstill of vehicles as far as the eye can see? That's not some kind of fiction. Not another episode of Johnny Apocalypse No, in this video I'll be talking about bug out planning and security for when the S hits the fan. Hello fellow mutants. A crisis scenario like the one I mentioned is possible in any heavily populated area and it's not fiction. When living in southeast Texas I experienced it firsthand during Hurricane Rita. People died during the evacuation itself with traffic and gridlock. A bus even exploded and caught on fire causing 23 deaths. When older, poorly maintained vehicles that rarely leave the city, sit idling for hours and overheat or run out of gasoline because they were not prepared for an emergency, they only add to the problem. No matter how many preps you have in your rolling apocalypse mobile, unless you can monster truck your way out of a bumper to bumper traffic, you'll be stuck too. Don't think because you live in the edge of the suburbs that you'll be safe either. The worst of gridlock in Rita was well north of Houston. Now imagine the scenario playing out in multiple cities. In the example of the bus, they were escaping to Dallas. If there were a global or regional disaster and all the cities were emptying out across a large state, imagine the chaos compounded. Imagine the major routes backed up in both directions. So you take the path less traveled. You take another way. What if the local residents of the small towns are Worried about an influx of desperate people? Will roads leading to those communities and your secondary routes be cut off by roadblocks? If you are really worried about a WROL without rule of law situation, I suggest you engage in more planning and preparation than just to hop onto I-10 until you get to Sierra Blanca using your cell phone to navigate the best way. There are stretches of I-10 without any easy way to get off and onto another road. A single road block might truly strand you if you or your vehicle are not ready. And that goes for other locations as well. Walking to your land would be an absolute last resort. I highly recommend a good paper road map. Yes, those things you get at gasoline stations, or at least you used to be able to get. Maybe you have to go online now to get them. So you're able to keep moving without relying on a smartphone. Cell tower signals might be disrupted or overloaded during a Tiatawaki situation to get to your destination. This did happen in Houston during the ice storm a few years ago. Cell towers went down and even a local prepper I used to follow admitted that he had full dependency in his smartphone and didn't even have an emergency radio. Your trusty nav app on your smartphone might be useless. So going back to the paper maps or printouts, use colored pencils to map out multiple alternate routes. Try at least one of these alternate routes if you can. One map I picked up myself it is about as good as any you'll find for detail that includes Hudsmith County is the Roads of Texas Highway Atlas by Mapsco. If you live in another state, you can try these Roads of, insert state name here, Atlas by Mapsco. That's M-A-P-S-C-O. You may want to print up a more detailed map of local roads around Hudspeth County as well, though it may be difficult to find a good map to print depending on how remote your property is, since even Google Maps doesn't have all the names of local roads listed. Laminating anything you print will make it weatherproof. It might be worth it, additionally, to do a little map making next time you head out to your land using a handheld GPS to map a route to your land. I will post a guide to that in the description of this video. For that matter, there are benefits to just having an inexpensive 
handheld GPS, which relies on long-lasting replaceable batteries and satellites rather than daily recharging and cell towers. Always be ready to go and ready for challenges. Make sure your vehicle is always ready to roll out. In fact, I like to keep my pickup truck pointed out toward the street. That way, if I need to, I can toss bags or boxes pre-packed into it at a moment's notice. And without a lot of people noticing in my subdivision since the back of my truck is closest to the garage. You don't want to be the last person on a packed highway out of your area and stuck behind other vehicles. Will you be able to drive off-road if even for a short while if needed? Even if your land is accessible by smooth roads, what if a blockade or traffic jam forces you to go into the dirt, rock, grass, or mud? Plan on having enough fuel. Have your vehicle's fuel tank at or near full at all times and get a can or cans of gasoline or diesel if that's what your vehicle uses, of course, as well. Based on hurricanes I experienced, it's not uncommon for gas stations to simply run out if there's a rush on gas, so you can't count on being able to fill up at the last minute. How many miles is it to drive to your land? What is the range of your vehicle when full? Can you make it with minimal stops for gas? Can you manage it only on gas you put in the back of your vehicle? Note a few places on your map where you could stop for gas and an alternative if those are out. Consider the alternative routes well and the time distance they will add to the trip. Leave a little gas so you can actually make it back to, to, to a town like Sierra Blanca if you're in a remote area for when things do finally blow over. If you have a generator, you may want to get enough gas to, of course, run that as well. Just be wary of being the only one around with a noisy generator in a without rule of law situation. You may as well be announcing that you have fuel with a megaphone. And pack your extra gas safely. However, you may not want it obvious and out in the open like this if desperate people are stranded around you. There's just one strap holding that thing in and a person could charge other vehicle, slip a knife underneath that piece of fabric, and next thing you know, they're running off with your gas cans. Next video, I'm going to go into what I think is one of the best types of vehicles for an SHTF situation. I look forward to hearing what you think. Until next time, it's Copper Mutant, signing out. Thank you.